how we will compare and contrast the different lions of different type of endocarditis. Already we discussed in the beginning of the lecture that some people de develop endocarditis as a part of rheumatic heart disease, right? Now let, let me go into detail of this. Here is mitral valve which I have put over there. In rheumatic heart disease, there is immune mediated damage to the mitral valves and multiple small vegetations are formed along the line of closure. These are small but multiple vegetations. These are sterile vegetations and they consist of just platelets and fibrin. And a very important point, they do not have any microorganism, they are sterile and they don't detach and they don't embolize. But when we compare rheumatic heart disease vegetations with the vegetations of infective endocarditis, which we discussed very recently, that infective endocarditis vegetations are very large. They are not sterile, they are having the microorganism, these are septic vegetation. These vegetations have a lot of inflammatory cells as well as microbiological agents and all of them are producing destructive substances. Due to that reason, these vegetations uh, are not only large but they are friable also and they can easily break away and embolize and they can lead eventually to septic metastatic abscesses in the body or septic emboli in the body, right? Then we can talk about marantic endocarditis. Marantic endocarditis is a condition or marantic vegetation is a condition which occurs when a person has hypercoagulable blood, when blood is hypercoagulable. When blood has a tendency to coagulate very easily, then naturally platelet and fibrin masses form at multiple places on the valves, right? This type of situation may be seen in uh, malignancies, malignancies, cancers, especially CA pancreas or CA colon, right? In these malignancies, mucin is released in the blood. What is released? Mucin. And mucin is procoagulant, right? And blood gets a high tendency to undergo coagulation and of course some message of coagulated blood or its constituents may be deposited over the valves of the heart. Again, these vegetations are initially sterile but they can become infected and septic during bacteremic phase. Number two, these are very loosely attached with the valve and they can dis dislodge from there and they can produce thromboembolism. Again, let's compare. Rheumatic heart disease has multiple vegetations, sterile vegetations which do not detach, right? Infective endocarditis vegetation may be small, one or more, but usually they are rapidly growing, they break away, they disintegrate, and they're destructive, they are ulcerative, they are septic, and they can produce septic embolism or metastatic abscesses. But when we talk about marantic endocarditis, this person has hypercoagulable state, it may be due to malignancy or hypercoagulability may be due to burns. Someone develop extensive burns, blood may become hypercoagulable or a patient who have promyelocytic, promyelocytic acute myeloid leukemia, right? This also, this type of uh, leukemia also releases chemical substances which are procoagulant right so any condition which lead to the blood to become more hypercoagulable uh, patient may develop multiple marantic uh, vegetations again they can dislodge right but usually they are sterile but if there's bacteremic phase they may become infected right after that then we can talk about vegetations of sle vegetations of sle are also called libman sac vegetations Libman sac vegetations. Libman sac disease or SLE vegetations are actually due to immunological process again. These vegetations are formed on the valve where they may form on any side of the valve. They may form on any side of the valve and these vegetations are a lot of fibrin and platelets and they are sticking very tightly with the valve and underlying valve here is abnormal. Underlying valve if you remove the vegetation is very much inflamed, intensely inflamed. Remember here underlying valve is absolutely normal, but here underlying valve is absolutely abnormal and it is tightly sticking. It does not embolize easily and uh, when it heals, it leads to 
fibrosis and distortion of the valve. Another important point is that sometimes they have hematoxylin bodies within the valve which point towards the diagnosis. Now we come to the carcinoid syndrome. You know carcinoid syndrome, normally the carcinoid tumors are formed within the GIT. If in the GIT there is carcinoid tumor, right, if carcinoid tumor is producing uh, biologically active products, usually these products are destroyed within the liver, right. For example, carcinoid tumor may produce rotanine or carcinoid tumor may produce calicrine or bradykinin or histamine or other substances. But usually from through portal circulation when carcinoid tumors release their bioactive products and if they go to the liver they are destroyed. But if this primary tumor gives secondaries and these secondaries are formed into liver then what really happens that Again, now, what really happens that if secondaries develop into liver, then from the liver, then from the liver, bioproducts from these metastases of carcinide will go to the right heart. And there, serotonin or its breakdown product lead to intense fibrosis and thickening as of thickening of the endocardium of the right heart. But when these products go to the lungs, they are destroyed over there. So what really happens that right heart is more exposed to the bioactive product of carcinoid tumors, metastasis in the liver or by those carcinoid tumors which are not draining into portal circulation, right? And when these carcinoid tumor produces 5-hydroxytryptamine or its metabolites, they produce intense fibrotic reaction and within the, uh, you can say, endocardium of the right heart. That may lead to dysfunction of tricuspid valve. Tricuspid valve may become stenotic or regurgitant. Some, sometimes they produce dysfunction in the pulmonary valve, right? And usually, if you do histological examination, you will find that this particular valve is having a lot of mucopolysaccharide material with some extra, unwanted extra smooth muscles with some collagen. But if someone develop carcinoid lions in the lungs, the naturally bioactive product will go to the left heart. Now endocardium in the left heart will suffer and carcinoid related endocardial damage will develop and maybe mitral valve become fibrotic, right? And left heart may suffer with the complications like the right heart. Is that right? So these are different type of endocarditis and their lions. Again, let me repeat it. Rheumatic heart disease vegetations don't embolize. Marantic vegetation may embolize. SLE usually do not, carcinoid never, but infective endocarditis embolize very frequently. Number one. Number two, rheumatic heart disease is immune mediated, SLE is immune mediated, and marantic is due to hypercoagulable state in the blood, and carcinoid is due to bioactive product from the carcinoid tumors, and infective endocarditis is due to microbiological agents. Out of these, Marantic vegetation are primarily sterile, but they can become infected during bacteriomic phase. And infective endocarditis vegetations are always septic, right? And usually the rheumatic heart disease vegetations or SLE vegetations and carcinoid lions, they don't get septic easily. Is that right? So th these were a few words if you want to compare contrast different type of endocarditis.